this week we went over the chapter nine uploads and downloads um, here's a few of our learning objectives for uh, today's session um, <clears throat> we'll we'll learn how to include uh, file upload and download uh, into our shiny applications uh, this will be useful for expanding what we can do with shiny um, and and the possibilities that it can bring uh, look into some some ui elements uh, with the uploading and downloading as well as uh, the server elements uh, we'll describe how these fit together with one another um, we'll look into a few examples um, and, and dive into it a little bit more. So this was um, uh, fairly short, but I also like we'll go into uploading and downloading, uh, but also it's a uh, important concept as well. So start off with uh, file uploads. Um, really, you only need one function, file input. Um, and that comes with two arguments, the ID and label. Um, some other arguments you can include uh, if you want to include multiple files to be uploaded. Uh, you can use this multiple argument. Uh, you can force the user to only upload certain types of files. So maybe you only want uh, CSV or zip files. So you can specify that um, with that argument. Um, so you can do it by uh, file extension, um, uh, MIME type as well, um, which this is an acronym um, and this We'll show you various examples, um, but that's not something that's used regularly. Um, and then you can uh, learn more by typing uh, file input. And so here's, you can like, change the uh, width, you can change to the button label uh, or the placeholder. And so there's a few um, few more arguments that you can uh, manipulate as well. Um, on the server side, uh, uh, we work with a data frame with a special structure, uh, and there are four columns um, that come from your um, file upload information. Um, the name, so the name of the file, the, the size of the file as well, um, type, and the data path. Um, and I believe that the book shows what this looks like. Um, so the book provided um, a toy example of uploading a file. We have uh, upload in our button label. We can upload more than one. Uh, and it's just outputting the file information that you see in the server. And so that's where we get um, the name of the file, the file size. Uh, there's that MIME type, as well as the data path that um, Shiny interprets. So that's kind of the bare bones and the essentials of what the upload is doing. And I guess we can, uh, if you didn't 
um, look at this or we can we can take a look at this as well. Um, So we can upload a uh, file. So there's the file name that I had on my computer, uh, the size of it. Um, it was a CSV, so it's text slash CSV. And this is the relative data path that like Shiny uh, interprets for that. Um, so two things to note about uploading a data set. Um, <clears throat> use the uh, the rec function to make sure the file is uploaded before code runs. Um, so if you have something after the the initial upload that uh, a function that's working with the data, uh, be sure to use this to make sure that it's uploaded before your code runs, uh, like so you don't get an error. <clears throat> and then we use accept to uh, limit the input types. Um, this was interesting. Uh, the browser doesn't always enforce it, so make sure to uh, use the validate function to make sure that it's being enforced. Um, so here, the example of uploading a data set and validating, uh, this is from the book. Um, I believe that there is also a toy example of this as well. So we only accept uh, CSV or tab separated values, uh, TSV. Um, And we use the, the require function to uh, make sure we have it before um, we do anything else. And this uh, tools file extension gets the um, the extension type out of uh, like the the metadata that comes with it. And so, depending on if it's a CSV or a TSV, it will uh, upload. And um, if it's not, then you will get this message. Um, and so this is this is showing um, the first few rows. Take a look at this. Um, and so this is interesting. I'm not sure if I noticed this in a different application, um, but it's forcing me to select either CSV or TSV. I can't, uh, for example, select this RDS file. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's limiting. That's funny. <laughs> Will it uh, give me an error again? Hmm. I, uh, I'm curious why it's giving me an error. I think it's uh, limiting you to for CSV and TSV due to the accept argument for the file input. Uh, and I also got the same error in the app when I tried to execute it before. Oh, 
That's weird. Um, <clears throat> I think this was, uh, I think before I was running this uh, example from the, uh, from the notes, um, it's, it's similar, it's pretty much the same thing from the book, and I was able to uh, run this okay. <clears throat> um, okay, let's, okay, yeah, this is what I did. Uh, check out app upload for uh, an example. Um, and I, I put it in a browser to put a breakpoint in so we can see what's going on with the uh, metadata. So yeah, this is this is what I just ran uh, for reference. Um, and so I uploaded MT cars and in the app, I put a browser statement in to uh, put a breakpoint in. And so if we take a look at some of that data, um, we see that the file extension is a CSV. Um, and we can take a look at some of the uh, metadata. And so there's the name, uh, size, and type for the file as well as the uh, relative data path. And we can even uh, select, uh, select out one of, of uh, we can like select the data path exactly, for instance. Um, so if we do, if we continue, Um, then it goes ahead and uh, displays the data. Um, any questions? Uh, Right. Uh, next is the downloads. Um, and for downloads, we use the uh, download button, ID and label, uh, or the download link. Uh, the difference is uh, just how they appear, a button versus like a clickable link. Um, so similar, but just different appearances. And then we can also customize with uh, different arguments like class or icon. So that's the uh, UI side of things in the server. Uh, we use download handler, uh, file name and content with the arguments. Uh, both are functions. Uh, file name, uh, no arguments, returns file name as a string and content has one argument uh, file. So I think we have an example coming up. Um, I, I appreciated this example and in, uh, in, in showing how a shiny app uh, acts um, so here's the diagram of, of what is taking place uh, in this example. Um, a user uploads uh, data into the app with file input. Uh, the user takes steps to modify the data. Um, so I feel like this, this step's fairly important for uh, 
for for um, building an app that has uh, you know uploads and downloads. Um, a user might have data, but they might want to um, get insights into that data. So I think that spec that second step is where you might do like um, summaries or aggregations or statistical um, techniques. Um, and then once Shiny performs that, uh, the user can export the data um, like as a CSV or Excel or, or whatever. Um, and then the app creates a uh, file name and writes it to the user's computer. And so that's where the download button and the uh, download handler comes in. So a lot of times it's CSV, it could be like Excel or a spreadsheet. Um, you can save it as an image. Maybe it's a, a plot or a graph that you want. Uh, Aimed onto your computer, um, or there's other outputs as well. Um, so we can allow the user to download a file containing data based on their exploration of an application. Um, and then we can provide functionality to uh, download certain types. So this is in <clears throat> app download data .r. As way too many uh, things open. Is there a shortcut for uh, stopping the app? I've You said a shortcut for stopping up. Yeah, it, this one's still running. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think Lucio last time was telling me how to do it. I was having a problem like switching to a different app. So it seemed like the other one was running in the background, even though I tried to stop it. Um, but yeah. Would it be in background uh, jobs, perhaps? I don't know. Do you want to stop a specific one or like all of them? I, I don't understand if you mean something like uh, Control C or Escape. Oh, uh, yeah. There we go. I I should have known that. Um, thanks. Yeah, that makes it a lot easier than finding it amongst all my tabs. Um, so this app is uh, to give you uh, an overview. Um, we use Shiny Feedback. That's um, a new library. Um, it's a simple filtering app. We'll upload a uh, CSV or TSV and <clears throat> the intended uh, data is this midwest.csv with state information. Um, we'll use some inputs uh, from the previous chapters. So we'll, we can filter by state uh, population and then uh, Uh, yes, control control C. That's that's what worked for me, Lydia. Oh, I'll type that out as well. So that saves uh, 
for the exported chat. Um, so we're providing it the whole table of, or the whole CSV for Midwest, but we're going to filter and then that will be our output that we download. Uh, let's see what else is important here. Uh, we use the require function before executing anything else. Um, this gets the file extension, um, air handling, making sure that we're uploading a CSV or TSV. And then um, this is just getting our input and filtering it, uh, the output, and then uh, the download handler, uh, both our functions. Um, so the file name will will be like the state we filter on and then uh, underscore population data. Um, and then this is, this is uh, how we write the file. So if I run this, um, it, so give me some data. Um, I'll upload the Midwest uh, file. Since I live in Ohio, we'll filter by that. Um, I wasn't sure what this, I, I didn't upload, I didn't look at this file before, um, before I went through this exercise, so I wasn't sure what population size was. Um, but if we filter, it filters um, by the county population size. So all counties in Ohio with um, 200,000 or more people. And the, there's some other like uh, stats for each county as well. Download that. Um, it goes into my downloads and uh, there you can have it for like further exploration or if you want to like save a hard copy or whatever or like the user can save a hard copy or, or do further manipulation. Um, but that's always beneficial to have. Um, I did not try, um, did not try doing a different upload. Like, I'm sure it will be confused because I don't, I didn't think there was like, um, air handling, so it will probably throw an air. Yeah. But I guess. Like um, further, like like a further next step would be to like make sure that the not only that the file extension is correct, but making sure like the columns are the name that you want and the right type as well. Otherwise, you might run into something like this. Quick question, Trevin. My question was related to having the different data uploaded. Uh, could we just make it something like, um, instead of having states there, could we just make something like variable and make the filter by population size something totally different? Maybe not for now, I was just um, suggesting. Would that really do help? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to follow along um you would have like a variable for, it seems, for what it seems it, it seems as though the app is strictly for just that data 
the other data yeah. you use that contain the yeah. So I was thinking if we have a situation whereby, because I've been thinking of an app that um, we could be that an app that could make it easy for students or maybe a lecturer to show several experimental design. That means this app, you can have many data into the app uploaded. And then this data, this data could be analyzed, possibly um, using different experimental design, maybe um, for example, agricultural data sets. In that situation, how can is, is it wouldn't it just be best to have those um, each of those um, fields changed to maybe um, variable, then maybe something else very different. Maybe that would really work. What do you think? Oh, you would have like you would have the possibility of having different different file types uploaded, like different um, different data sets uploaded, and and you would want the end result to still be um, that you could explore the data no matter what. Um, yeah, Am something I like that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like, um, you go. So you have your tiny app, and then, like, you'd want your user to be able to upload, like, either one of these, and still have, um, yes, and still get a result. Still have a way to a summarize result. the data. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, that, that is po possible. Um, I think, uh, I think you would have to have a way to like, for instance, like this is where the, um, This is where all the like summarizing goes and the filtering. So you'd have to be careful with the column names. Um, like if you just did, um, if you use like a function that could take any data frame, like the summary function. Um, you wouldn't have that issue, but if you wanted to get into like specific uh, column selection, you could run into issues there. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, I guess it. I guess it depends. I'm sorry if that didn't fully answer your question. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. I'll just have to give it a try then. I think I'll just come back to the same um, quote and show you guys um, what I've done so far and get your contribution in the long run. Uh, I think it does. Thank you so much. Okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> and I also didn't look at the exercises too much in detail, but um, these these looked like they would be um pretty useful to work through as well um but yeah thank you thank you for the question um any other um thoughts or, or questions on on this section Right. Uh, so, like the last section of the notes is uh, fairly similar to, I guess, similar in concept to um, the last section. But here we're generating an like an R markdown. Excuse me. We're uh, generating a report. Um, so, like using R markdown. Um, in this case, it will be uh, an HTML report in the example, um, but it can be PDF as well. Um, and 
Um, and now that tools like Corto are out as well, like I'm sure uh, you can download like Corto reports as well. Um, but this is uh, this is kind of, this is what the book repre represented, and I think it was uh, maybe before Corto came out. Um, so kind of a similar concept, uh, user provides inputs. Um, for here, we're just doing um, like a couple different inputs to uh, generate a distribution. Um, I think there's like a normal distribution in the example and a log normal. Uh, the app asks for like number of observations. So that will be another input. And then it will generate a report. Um, so there will be a list of uh, parameters, uh, in our case, uh, distribution and n. And then the parameters get sent to uh, .rmd file uh, for rendering. And then it's outputted um, with HTML or PDF. So uh, parameterized R markdown is a good way to do this. Um, uh, so some potentials, filters, uh, simulation parameters. Um, uh, the key, ID, key idea here is call R markdown render uh, from content argument of uh, the download handler. Um, so we'll take a look at this. Uh, control C, perfect. So this was, or this is similar in, in structure as well to uh, the download data. Um, so this first part copies report to current working directory. I think this was a tip in the book as well as the notes. Um, .rmd renders in working directory, so copy file uh, temporary directory before rendering. And so that's uh, that's what we're doing here. Um, this will render uh, the report in a new environment. Um, if you haven't checked out uh, the advanced R book, it's available online for free. And there is a book club as well for that. Um, but that, that also gets into, uh, you can learn more about, about environments and uh, using the advanced R book. Uh, so here, um, there's a couple things in the UI, uh, selecting a distribution, uh, two choices, and then selecting how many uh, values we want in the distribution. We'll, we'll download it. Um, and then the two, uh, two inputs for our download handler, the file name, uh, it'll be HTML um, as well as content. Um, so here we get a, a list of parameters. Um, This is also like a pop-up message for telling the user it's rendering. Um, and then this was in the last like yep. uh, dot RMD renders in current R process. So consider running in separate session with, uh, for example, call R package. So that's um, that's what that's doing. Uh, 
Uh, so to see that in action, sure. Uh, we'll use the normal distribution. Um, we have a slider input. Generate the report. Here's that uh, notification that you get. That's just report.html. And so that's uh, that's what you get out. Um, this is an HTML, but it can be a PDF. Um, and this might be just one plot, but you could see how um, you could easily create like uh, a more detailed report and have it be um, yeah with yeah with more information as well. Um, so that was uh, not sure if I think the book might have, I'm not sure if they went into any more detail. Um, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. The other note was our markdown works in the current working directory, which will fail. Uh, in many deployment scenarios. Uh, so like if you're using shinyapps.io. So that's a good, another good thing to uh, be aware of. Um, and then, yeah, so it can be helpful uh, for reproducibility and uh, you can check out Joe Chang's uh, uh, use our keynote to like find out more. Put that link in the chat. But yeah, I think um, I think that's um, that covers most of the chapter. Um, Uh, uh, not a whole lot of content, but also um, it's fairly important concepts to like get down. And there's the, there's Joe Chang's talk. Um, any uh, any like observations from what you read or um, like observations on what we went over today or yeah I I agree Lucio uh, those were some good examples. No questions for me at the moment. Just wanted to say thank you for the presentation. Yeah. Um, yeah, the only other comment I think I have is um, that uh, in my work, uh, we we're, we're working with, um, we're working with someone else to help develop like a specific shiny app and um, the app uh, asks the user to download or to upload um, data from a specific report and it's like a monthly upload and uh, that data gets sent to a um, a SQL database. Um, so, like, in addition to um, making sure that, like, they're uploading a zip file, um, 
there's other like checks and balances for making sure that they're inputting the correct zip file and that the uh, all the column names match and the types uh, so that there's there's no errors when it um, appends to the database. Um, so yeah, that that's just like an example of uh, like a real world scenario, but um, so I thought that was interesting, and I thought this uh, chapter was uh, an interesting look into uh, the concept as well. Thank you so much, Irvin. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have for this week. Um, I want to say thank you everyone for coming around again. Um, uh, I think there's so much to say, explore here, and uh, I look forward to going through, um, going through it in depth. And also the link you shared out, uh, check it. Um, by next week again, we're going to run that chapter. And um, I think Lucia has signed up for that and you'll be taking that chapter. So I think um, that, that that's it. Thank you so, so much, um, Trevin. Um, oh, I, I do want to add one more thing um, not related to this chapter. OK. Um, I think I saw in this channel at the beginning of the year that uh, there may be another uh, R Studio posit uh, shiny contest. Um, and I thought it was supposed to be at the beginning of this year. Um, so it's a public open contest where you can uh, build a shiny app. Uh, you can build whatever you want. And there's um, In the past, there were like different tiers for like beginner shiny developers and uh, shiny developers with more experience. Um, and they like gave away like prizes as well. So something to like keep an eye out uh, on in the channel. Thank you. And then I forgot if we already mentioned it, but I think shiny plants is coming up. I forgot exactly when. Um, is that the that's the Absalon conference? Yeah. Yeah, I think that is coming up in March. Um, I think that uh, I think I saw the deadline just passed for speakers. Um, but I think that's that's one that. The app I was talking about, I think um, the person we were working with is going to present there. Um, and I might help out in a small part. So I'll, I'll be looking forward to that one. I'll drop the link in the chat. Yeah, it's March 15th to the 17th. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I need to add that to my calendar. Awesome, thank you. Um, and it looks like we dropped, or Matthew dropped out. Um, so maybe maybe we'll catch him in the Slack later. Sounds good. But yeah, thank you again, Trevin. I hope everyone has a good day. Awesome, thank you as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, Lucio. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.